Hello and welcome. My name is Karen Lauritsen. I am Senior Director Publishing with the Open Education Network. And today we are going to talk about the Open Textbook Library. The library was founded and continues to be run from the College of Education and Human Development at the University of Minnesota. So what is the Open Textbook Library or OTL for short? We think of it as two things. First, it's a resource. It's an online resource for the common good. Anyone, anywhere can use the resources, the open textbooks that are in the library. We work to try and include any open textbook that meets our criteria and more about our criteria in a minute. Second, we think of the library as a strategy to connect faculty to open options. So for those of you who are members of the Open Education Network, uh, we have a workshop, an adoption workshop, during which we invite faculty to review open textbooks. And this in turn introduces them to the resources available in the library. Now I'm recording this in July, 2023. And obviously this is just one moment in time. Time will continue to march forward and so for any of the data that I share here, I want to point out where you can get up to the minute data. So this is a screenshot of the Open Textbook Library, and I have circled and included a blue arrow there on the left, pointing to where you will always be able to find up to the minute information on exactly how many open books are in the library at that moment. Today, there are 1,258. If you are an Open Education Network member and you have login access to the Community Hub, you can also find data about the Open Textbook Library when you log into the Hub. And I've circled where you can see that there um, on the right side of the Login uh, Community Hub menu. Now, let's take a moment and look at the Open Textbook Library as it is today. Here we are on the library's homepage. I'm just going to briefly walk you through the navigation and some of the features of the homepage. First and foremost, you can see there in the center is an orange button that says browse subjects. This is one way for you or faculty to see what's available in the library. You can see that my cursor is currently hovering over computer science. And when you hover over a subject area, it will tell you how many books are in that area. In this case, there are 120 computer science textbooks. You'll also notice that there are three subsubjects listed under the computer science heading. That includes information systems, programming languages, and databases. Anywhere you see the plus sign on a subject area, that means that there are additional uh, subsubjects listed in that area. And the top level is a cumulative number. You can also browse subjects from uh, the left navigation, which says browse subjects. Uh, also on the home page on the left column, you will notice there is a new books list. These are the most recently added open textbooks in the open textbook library. And on the right side, you will see a list of titles that are coming soon. These uh, titles are being created by Open Education Network members, and they enter the uh, textbook metadata for these titles so that you know what is in the pipeline. Continuing on with our brief orientation to the navigation, under about open textbooks, you will find open textbook criteria, as well as a list of frequently asked questions. And they are just what they sound like. These are the most commonly asked questions. If I don't cover something today and you uh, still have a question, it's probably covered here. Uh, we also list the organizations and friends that have been involved in the creation and support of the library. There is an area under submit where you can suggest an open textbook for the collection. This is very much appreciated and always welcome. 
Under discovery, we list discovery options and when applicable information on how to access the uh, open textbook library records through these different discovery methods. And then finally, we include a link back to our organizational homepage. Returning to our slides after our brief tour of the Open Textbook Library, I'd like to talk a little bit more deeply about what's in there, how it got there, and uh, share some more background information. So where do the books in the Open Textbook Library come from? Well, a variety of places. That includes funded initiatives. Uh, these are often hosted at an institution or within a consortium. They provide grant money to a faculty author to create an open textbook. Sometimes authors work independently without institutional support. Sometimes a discipline or scholarly society will decide to create a resource for their field. And really a variety of other places, including dedicated open textbook publishers um, and other initiatives. Here is a look at an open textbook library record. This is for a book called Brass Techniques and Pedagogy. And I'd just like to pause here and say how exciting it is to see an open textbook for such a niche subject. In the early days, um, when I first started making these videos, we had a lot of books like Introduction to Biology and Anatomy and Physiology books for really high enrollment classes, which was a really important part of the strategy and also obviously very important resources. However, through the years, it's been really exciting to see more and more resources created in so many different subject areas. So, okay, I said that piece. Uh, now I'd just like to walk you through some of the information you see here. In the top left under the title of the book, you can see that there are four reviews and that cumulatively the reviews are about four and a half out of five stars. You see the author, the institution the author is affiliated with, the year the book was published, 2020, and the publisher, Palney Press. You can see the language the book is published in and the different formats that are available and continuing down the conditions of use, this book is licensed Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Share Alike. And then you get just a preview of the first most recent review. Uh, if we were in the library, you could continue to scroll down to read all of the reviews. And then turning our attention to the top right, we have a listing of the table of contents. If there were ancillary material for this resource, so let's say, instructor slides or student quizzes or maybe sheet music, you would see it listed and linked there. We don't know of any that are affiliated with this book, and so there's a link there for somebody to let us know if we've missed it. There's a very brief, in this case, very brief and succinct uh, about the book area and then a little bit more about the contributors. This is more information uh, from the publisher. I just wanted to highlight that this is an example of a grant funded um, project that uh, the Palney Consortium supported through support uh, from the Lilly Endowment. And so this just is one example of where open textbooks come from in this particular case. Uh, they even point out that in order to receive a grant in their program, that the finished product must meet the inclusion criteria for the Open Textbook Library. You may recall that when we were looking at the library site, there was a column called Coming Soon, and I mentioned that the metadata provided there is um, provided by Open Education Network members. And this feature was really inspired by the community. Uh, initially, it was called the Publishing Pipeline. We had a working group which talked about how we can surface different projects that are being developed within the OEN community. It also highlights member publishing programs and anyone who has login access to the community hub can create a coming soon record. 
Um, this can be helpful if you see a record or a book that is in the pipeline and you think this is gonna be useful to one of my faculty or perhaps one of my faculty may be interested in collaborating. Um, it's just one way to make more transparent uh, some of the work that's going on in the OEN. Now, here's an example of a book that was developed by a scholarly society. In this case, the American Anthropological Association. This book was published a few years ago in 2017, giving it a little bit more time to gather more reviews. In this case, 17 reviews. There were three different um, contributors to the book. And in this case, it's available as a PDF and as an ebook. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the four criteria for including an open textbook in the library. First and foremost, and probably obviously, there needs to be an open license on the textbook that allows for editing. Usually this is going to be a Creative Commons license, but sometimes you might see a GNU or other license. The book must be available in a complete portable file. So the whole book in one file, not just say in uh, different chapters, but one complete portable file so that a student could download the book and have access to it in its entirety, uh, especially if they do not have reliable internet access. The book must be affiliated with an institution or a scholarly society or used in more than one location. So for example, we looked at uh, two books just moments ago. One was affiliated with an institution or a consortium, Palni. The other was affiliated with a scholarly society. And finally, the book must be the original book. Um, we did this with our faculty audience in mind. Of course, one of the many benefits of an openly licensed open textbook is that it can be changed by anyone and it can be adapted to best meet the needs of a student audience anywhere. However, thinking about potentially having all of those adaptations in the library, we figure it would be a bit overwhelming to faculty to try and weed through all the different variations of a particular book. And so we really try to stick to the original book of record within the library, unless it has been really heavily adapted for an entirely new audience. So let's say there's an intro to statistics book, great. Um, if there was then an intro to statistics for nursing book, uh, we would go ahead and add that to the open textbook library because it's for a new audience. These criteria were developed with the faculty user top of mind, really thinking about the goal of the library, not just as a resource, but also as a strategy to provide a place for faculty to become acquainted with open educational resources and to make that an easy and clear experience for them. We have developed the criteria through the guidance of our steering committee. We have had um, to make some strategic considerations for the future. In other words, to keep the library um, manageable uh, was one of the reasons why we also didn't include additional adaptations of a particular work. And things do evolve. So in the very beginning, uh, when the Open Textbook Library was just getting started, there were books that included the no derivatives clause. In other words, they had an open Creative Commons license, but they did not allow for editing. And as time went by, we agreed that that is not open in the way that um, we want it to be. We want to allow for editing and adaptation and so that is integral to uh, the library now. So while you may see a couple books in there that have the ND license, we no longer include, um, include those in terms of adding new ones. We will not add new books that have the ND license. As you've seen, there are currently more than 1200 textbooks in the library. Typically we're adding new books on a weekly basis. The subjects are organized by the World Library's Outline of Academic Disciplines. Books can be cross-listed in multiple disciplines. And as you saw, the menu will show the number of books per subject area. 
If you have access to the community hub, you can also see this lovely and colorful chart, which will give you the number of books in a particular subject area as well. In addition to having an overview of uh, the subject areas, you can also use the search and filter functions on the library homepage. And there are a variety of discovery methods, which include live cumulative mark records. We have JSON API instructions. You can uh, choose to get your OTL records in an RSS feed. They're also in WorldCat and in the Alma Community Zone. Okay, I brought us back to the live library page because I wanted to show you the search and filter function. Here it is in the top right. That's where it's always going to be, no matter where you are on the library. And if I were to enter circuits, for example, that is going to bring up open textbooks that have the word circuit, either in the title, in the description, in the author bio, pretty much uh, anywhere in the record. If there are just really a ton of results, or if you want to further filter your results, there is an option to do that once you have done a search. And those filters are listed here. You can filter by language, you can filter by license, format type, and uh, you can order your results either by the date added to the library, the faculty rating, or the publication date. Now, in the previous screen, I mentioned how you can filter by language. And while the vast majority of books in the Open Textbook Library are currently in English, there are books uh, in other languages as well as translations. So here's an example of a translation. In this case, we're on the record for OpenStax, College Physics. Uh, this is in English. And um, you can see under versions in the lower left column, there is a button called or named Polish. And so indeed there is a Polish translation of this book. So if you were to click on Polish, it takes you to the Polish translation of the book. And from here, you can see um, that there is a link to the English version. So we always try to connect the um, translation so that you know when there is a book that exists in another language. Now a little bit more about the open textbook review criteria. I mentioned at the beginning that OEN uh, member institutions often host workshops. At those workshops, faculty are invited to choose and submit a review for a book. And the review is based on uh, these criteria, clarity, comprehensiveness, consistency, content accuracy, cultural relevance, grammatical errors, interface, modularity, organization structure flow, relevance, and longevity. These have been adapted from BC campus, and we do consider this to be a light review. About 74% of the collection does include faculty reviews. And here you can see a breakdown. Uh, most of the books in the OTL are favorably reviewed. And uh, this is the breakdown from no to five stars. The shades of purple may be a little bit difficult to distinguish, but um, the majority have a uh, four and a half star rating with five and four um, close behind in terms of the most common rating. I also want to mention that the Open Textbook Library is technically what's called a referatory. We do not archive the files or store the files. We're really pointing to where those files live online. We drive traffic to where the author or publisher has shared their work. However, to address faculty concerns and just in case, we do have a dark archive where we save files in case they should disappear forever from the internet, which does not happen very often at all. 
Um, and we would like to thank Colorado State University Library for providing this archive and helping us manage and maintain it. Here's a closer look at the submit an open textbook feature. Again, we very much appreciate your suggestions and we count on the community to crowdsource the collection and let us know what's out there. I'd also like to mention that uh, last year, the Open Textbook Library celebrated 10 years and that we look forward to continuing to improve and grow the library for the next 10 years. Finally, if you have any questions, please see the FAQ at the Open Textbook Library or email us at open at umn.edu. You can also sign up for our quarterly OTL newsletter at open.umn.edu slash open textbooks slash news. Thank you so much for your interest in open education and for joining me today.